Welcome, friends, to Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. We bring you the greatest female voices in the music industry, from the artists, songwriters, and producers, to managers and executives, and all the women who make the music industry what it is today. Thank you for joining us. Hello and welcome to another episode of Crazy Women Country. I'm Paula and today we have Cora Norton with us. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great, doing great. So glad you uh, came on to see us. Fantastic. Yeah, of crazy time differences. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which is cool. Okay, so the first question, which is always our hardest question. Who is Cora? Oh, sorry, I just lost sorry. you there. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you just hung. Um, so the question was, who is Cora? We like to make it difficult to start. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> that is a hard question. Um, look, I'm 22 years old, raised um, in the on the east coast of New South Wales, Australia. So it's about an hour and a half down ways from Sydney. Um, beautiful little spot of the world. I love singing, songwriting, music is my passion. Um, I also work three days a week in administration in aged care um, and I would say what defines me is my family and the people that I surround myself with. I have a really, really wonderful group of born family and chosen family that I absolutely adore. Awesome. Sounds perfect, perfect. So you said your music is your passion. But when you were younger, you had another passion. You have to tell me about that. Tell us about your, yeah, your, your look, passion I, when you were younger. Yeah, when I was younger, I was a cheerleader. I spent eight years with a club doing um, doing competition, cheerleading, so stunting, tumbling, all that jazz. I wasn't amazing at it. I, I feel like when people are like, oh, you were a cheerleader for eight years, you must have been doing somersaults and flips and all this stuff. And I was like, no, nah, I was a pretty dodgy cheerleader. But I really enjoyed it. Like, <laughs> I loved what I did. I loved my team. I loved the environment. <laughs> Competing, it was all so much Perfect. fun. Um, and my yeah. heart broke a little bit when I was 14 years old because I couldn't do cheerleading anymore. I had just come out of a spinal surgery from um, some issues that I had been having and um, yeah I, I stopped doing cheerleading and I needed somewhere else to channel my energy because I'm, I was a ball of energy when I was younger um, so I, I picked up a guitar and I taught myself a little bit previously but I really um, really honed in on learning guitar and writing songs and that is where I really fell in love with music. Awesome. Now I can understand where you come from. I used to be a, a jabber thrower, um, and you know I went to all, to all levels and everything. But I ended up having spinal surgery and never really got back into it again. So I can understand how hard it is when you lose that one thing, and then finding something else to to, to, to yeah. try for is amazing. But uh, thank God you found music. Thank God you found music. <laughs> That's what we love. I so, know. <laughs> Tell us about your newest single, Head in the Sand. Head in the Sand is such a fun song. I have actually been working on this. I found a video from the end of 2021 where I was in the studio recording this song. So it's been a long, long time coming. Um, mm -hmm. I wrote it in 2021 when we were locked down during the COVID period and um, I was feeling the need to escape the house like everyone else. Oh, yes. um, I really just wanted to, to get out and head for the beach or something like that. So I sat down and I wrote a song. Um, oh, I wanted to write a song about, about escaping but not make it, you know, too lockdown coded. Um, yeah. So the other thing that I was doing during lockdown was absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we um, I was well ignoring <laughs> all of my problems. I had this... Right, I had this long of it was happening, so I decided head in the sand could be something about procrastinating and about ignoring your problems, but also be an escape to the beach. 
sounds awesome. And I must admit, it could be a summer anthem. I must admit, when you listen to it, it's very upbeat. It's very fun. And I must admit, it made me think of summer because it's so cold here at the moment. So it's like, yeah. I <laughs> we need it. summer like this, I think. <laughs> it's we very summer much like summer here. Yeah, see, we need to swap. <laughs> well, we're moving into it. It is slowly getting warmer <laughs> during the day, but we have got some days where the wind is just so cold. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Um, so, in 2017, you were busking at Tamworth, uh, like a talk, Tamworth Country Music Festival, which I've heard so much about, this, especially over the last the last few months because it hasn't long it's just it hasn't long finished has it the festival yeah so it's in january um sort of like middle of january so i yeah did a couple of days there this year awesome, awesome. yeah and my my first year there was 2017 and i spent 10 days busking in um 40 degrees celsius heat which was just insane um and it's funny to think like how far I've sort of come from that to being in the Star Maker Grand Final playing on the main stage last year um where I was playing for a crowd of up to 10,000 which is just insane like I had three little people gathered in my busking spot and I thought I was successful you know I've made <laughs> it <laughs> so yeah, that is um, awesome. yeah, it's a really <laughs> nice circle moment Perfect. I love that. I love that. I mean, busking must be a lot of fun though, because you get to just be out there and and and, and just see how it is, and you must find a lot of new fans doing that. It's quite cool. <laughs> yeah, busking is actually it's it's really fantastic. Like having people just walk down the streets who've never heard of you before, just stop and sit and listen to your music is such yeah. a heartwarming feeling. Like it's not like they're all there because there's a big show on the stage and they're watching everyone they've walked past and they've decided you're worth stopping for so I just think that that's such a lovely moment yeah yeah that is so cool I must admit I think we need more of it we really do. apart from some of the mm. buskers that you have are just horrendous but <laughs> yeah you know, <laughs> challenge of people busking it'd be awesome um, yeah it'd be a great way to find new artists and everything else that'd be cool um so tell us, when you were growing up, tell us uh, who were some of your heroes, so your female heroes. Um, I would say I want to say Carrie Underwood was the the big, um, yeah, the big one for me. I really, really, when I was a kid, I didn't, and I don't want to say I didn't like country music because I hadn't listened to country music. Mm -hmm. Like I had just this mindset of what country was in my head that was so not true um and it was Carrie Underwood's album I had her storyteller album and mm. we had one trip where there was like no service in the car so we couldn't pick up any radio stations and we put this album on and it was this moment of like wow this is country music you know, and I really, really like it. And so that's where I sort of started into the the country music, you know, just listening to it. Um, and this was when I was already playing, you know, writing songs and playing guitar. And my dad sort of said to me, you know, these songs sort of sound country, Cora. And I was like, they're not country. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, but they were, and, and it worked. And I love country. Um, yeah, so that's it. I think sometimes we get probably caught up in the real old style country. And of course country has evolved mm. so much over the years, hasn't it? From the from the, the the twangy stuff that was, you know, sort of way back to what country music is now. It has really, really changed. So uh that's awesome. <laughs> that's very cool. Definitely. That's awesome. Um, okay, perfect. So are you ready for our thirteen crazy questions? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I think I lost you. It comes and goes. It could oh, be you, it could be me, it could you. be just soon being crazy. <laughs> not soon right. Okay, perfect. So these are just oh, yeah. fun, nothing serious. We haven't been arrested yet, so that's all the good thing. Um, but yeah, just have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, number one, okay. what is your favourite type of transport? 
My favorite type of transport. Okay. My favorite type of transport. I love driving. I'm really like so, so much of a, a driving type of gal, like windows down, radio up, hair everywhere kind of vibe. Um, yeah. I know I have this little mini Cooper. His name is Timmy. He's very, very cute. So he's <laughs> my favorite mode of transport, driving awesome. that little bit. I love minis. Is it the newer style mini or the old style mini? The newer style. The newer shape, yeah. They're awesome. I love them. They're very, very cool. They are very cool. Okay. So if you're having a bad day, what is your feel good TV show or film that you go to? Oh, um, I am a bit of a, I don't want to say like I'm a movie buff, but I am really, into movies um so this is a very hard question for me i i wouldn't say that it's like a feel good movie but like any of the marvel universe movies are like my okay, comfort yeah. movies yes. yeah like i'm really deep dive into that universe if you see around my room i have marvel stuff everywhere <laughs> bit of a nerd um but yeah they might sort of my comfort movies yeah Okay, extra question. Who's your favourite Marvel character? Spider-Man. <laughs> cool. Spider-Man, I'm to tell that. <laughs> okay, now, if I came to you and said I have a dead body, would you know a good place to hide it? Oh, would I know a good place? Probably not. I rarely leave my house, <laughs> so unless there's a <laughs> lovely spot in my house somewhere, um, I'm, like, <laughs> home or work and I can't think of anywhere. Um, That's a good dodge. Yeah. I don't think we should hide it in your house. I, think I don't think we should hide it at my house. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, work maybe, maybe drop it in the ocean. Feels like it's drop it in on the way past. Yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with the ocean. <laughs> okay. If you could write with anyone, dead or alive, who would you like to write with? <laughs> Freddie Mercury. I've had this question before and I've thought a really lot about it and there are a lot and a lot of people that I would like to write with. But mm -hmm. I just think, and it's not necessarily because it would be a song that's my style, I just think what an experience would be to write with Freddie Mercury. Like he just, yeah. after watching um, the the Queen movie, what this man does and how yeah. his, his amazing. mind works. And I would just love to be, even just be in the room while he was writing a song because I think it would be crazy. That, is, that would be amazing. He is absolutely amazing superstar. He's just... <laughs> Yeah, I could, I, yeah, you know, I would just love to watch that, just to sit there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If your life was a reality show, what would it be called? What would it be called? Um, my life, I feel like, like I said before, so defined by family and the people that I surround myself with. And I live in a house at the moment with myself, my partner, my mum, my dad, my sister, her partner, their two children, four dogs who are barking right now, and a bird. So I feel like our <laughs> life as a reality TV show could be summed up by calling it the Griswolds. We like to call ourselves the Griswolds. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're a bit of a crazy family. It, lots of that. weird things happen in this house, and I feel like it would make great television. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. The Griswolds. And it's just great. It's always good having family around you. It's just, you know, it's just a happy place to be. That's just awesome. But I love the way you've got yeah. the food in Chaotic. You. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's very, very cool. The Griswolds. That's a great I would watch that. Actually. I don't watch reality TV much, but I would definitely watch that one. <laughs> Which artist would you love to duet with? Mm. I would say Lainey Wilson. She's crazy. I, I, I'm excited. She's coming to Australia very, very shortly um, in a couple of weeks' time. I'm so excited to be at her show and I cannot wait. And I would die 
to sing something on the stage with her. <laughs> she is amazing. She is absolutely awesome. She has this amazing voice. She really does. Yeah, mm. I see her. Yeah. If I could sing, I think it would be her as well. Definitely. Um, okay. If you, uh, if you owned a bar, what would you call it? Oh, if I owned a bar, um, I would call it, and it might not pass inspection or whatever, I would call it Till We Drop Bar because I have a single that I released um, from my last album forever ago, maybe like two years ago, I want to say. It was called Till We Drop. Um, yeah. Bit of a drinking song. I feel like it would work. I feel like it would be very Cora. That would be very, <laughs> very cool. I love that. <laughs> I love that. That is so cool. Till we drop. That's a great name for a bar, though. That really is a great name for a bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What scares you the most? I'm not talking about failure in the music industry. What outside of that scares you the most? Um... Mm. I used to be terrified when I was a child, and it's so irrational. I used to be terrified of knives. Um, okay. I could use a knife if anyone else was holding a knife near me. I would lose it. I just couldn't. I'm getting so much better. Like people can cut things next to me now, and I don't have this problem. <laughs> um, today, what scares me? I don't. I don't know. I'm sure there are lots of things. I'm a very easily scared person. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know. I don't have like some big phobia big that I've found okay. yet. Yet, no. Then you have to say you say it's irrational, but a lot of fears are irrational, aren't they? Most yeah. of them are irrational for one reason yeah. or another. Like, like my 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 fear of snakes. They give me the heebie-jeebies, and you know, most of the time <laughs> they probably wouldn't come near me, but they do give me the heebie-jeebies. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would be no good in Australia. I'd be like constantly looking. <laughs> My children <laughs> still follow me. <laughs> uh, no, well, I went for a walk the other day and I had a little baby snake just crawl in front of the path in front of me, just at the marina near the beach. So they're everywhere. <laughs> we do, we do get snakes here. I must admit, and that most of them are, aren't very big. Most of them are very, very tiny, but they still freak me out. I mean, even. Our dogs have killed them because they've got into the garden. So, you know, they're not huge things. And now mm. one of our littlest dogs is the one that kills them. So, you know, but for me, yeah. they're, just, they're just, I don't know, they shouldn't, they shouldn't, I don't know, they shouldn't exist. <laughs> they're the weirdest things ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so what would your plan be for a zombie apocalypse? I have thought about this time and time again and truth be told, I think I'd be the first to die in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I have no survival instincts. I can't run quickly. I wouldn't know what to do with a gun if you put one in my hand. I have very little survival instincts. I would probably hide in my room until they come and get me and <laughs> that would be that would be. <laughs> Be but you and the mini just driving down the road and just you know running through them. That's, that's what yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. What is your guilty pleasure food? Oh, um, it's chocolate. It's always chocolate. And the thing is, I always say like I'm not going to eat a lot of chocolate. I'm cutting down on what I'm eating, and then I have a walk through a shopping centre and the little chocolates that sit next to the checkouts are my undoing because I'm like, oh, I'll just grab one of those and put it on the counter. They do that on purpose. They do that um, on and it's purpose. every time. I know, I know. It's literally every time, though. I at least have 70 billion chocolates a day. <laughs> <laughs> is there any one particular bar or is it just, it's just chocolate? It just has to be chocolate. Mm, my favourite is a mint Kit Kat. Uh, I don't think we've had mint ones over here. We've had the peanut butter one, you know, the chunky Kit Kats with peanut butter in. But yeah. I don't know if we've had a mint one yet. Maybe it hasn't hit Europe. Maybe it's oh, an Australian thing. 
<laughs> oh, well, I think it's called Tasmanian mint in one of our states, so it might be in Australia. It might be. Ah, there you go. It's just a legal thing. Oh, that's just not fair. What about us? <laughs> you never know. They might come up with a different I have to send some over. Just... There you go. <laughs> That'll be cool. That'll be cool. Okay. What's the weirdest thing in your fridge? Um, my fridge, it's very full at the moment because my partner and I won a, won three trays at a meat raffle a couple of days ago. So it's just, <laughs> so you've got it's meat got anywhere. like 20 pork chops in it. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Um, <sighs> I, and I've also got lots of, lots of fruit for my bird and that's pretty much all that is in my fr- fridge at the moment. It is fruit and meat. <laughs> Fruit and meat, I love that. <laughs> if, if you're not a meaty, at least you've got fruit. I love it. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Um, okay, what three things would you always have with you? When you leave the house, what are three things you always take with you? Um, I am very, very good at leaving things behind. So half the time I'll leave my house and I won't even have my wallet with me and I'm just lucky that pretty much everything lives on my phone so um I want to say my phone because I would be lost because I wouldn't have my wallet I wouldn't have my ID (laughs) I wouldn't have anything um and hopefully and I often forget them which is terrible because I'm supposed to wear them all the time my glasses (laughs) and I couldn't even think of the third thing to be honest with you like I really am when I go out, I, I don't take anything with me. I'm lucky to have my phone okay. half the time. Yeah, I'm terrible. Yeah. Me and my wallet, I spend most of my time, if I'm going out, I'm like, okay, now where is it? And I have this tendency to put it in a jeans pocket, <laughs> you know, change the bed, and it's still in my jeans pocket, but I wear a different pair tomorrow, and then I'm like, where did I put that? Yeah, so yeah. I, never, I never know where it is. And it's like, I leave yeah. the house, and I realise, please don't stop <laughs> me, because everything's in that wallet, and i will be in trouble. <laughs> That'd be a major issue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Last question. If you could visit anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? Oh, this is such a hard question. I have a, a incredibly long list of all the places that <laughs> I want to visit. And um, you know, there's some really there's some really beautiful places on there, like natural sites and um, I'd really like to visit Greece and um, I'd like to go to the Bahamas and, you know, I like all of these beautiful, naturally lovely places. But guiltily at the top of my list, I would probably like to go to Disney World in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Disneyland in California beautiful but I yeah. am just hanging to go to Florida and do like a full week of you know like like I said I'm a bit of a nerd I love the oh, Star totally. Wars the Marvel all of that I, I want to immerse myself in that world <laughs> uh, I've been to I've been to Florida I've been to California I've been to Paris I just haven't done mm. the one is it I think it's Tokyo the other one Tokyo yeah, the only yeah. one I haven't done, and I'm not actually too sure I'll ever get to do that one. But I've done the other three, and they're awesome. So, oh yeah, just... which one's the best? Oh, see, I don't know. See, Florida was amazing, but we only did it for a day, and it was just yeah. we did it we did it Christmas Day, and it's just so huge. Um, California was awesome, but we did that during September 11 happened, so it was so quiet. So of course, oh, for us, oh. it it was a really bad time, but. Obviously, it was it was so empty, um, and then Paris. Yeah. Paris was good actually. I was really surprised. I wasn't too sure what to expect from Paris, but it was really really good. Um, they have like two, two. Well, it's like the other ones. They have two separate parks, so that was very cool. I don't, I don't know if I can actually pick one or the other. They're all slightly different, and their parades are different and yeah. stuff. So yeah, I mean, as I said, Florida was great, but the problem was we did it for one day, and it was just it's huge. I think, and we must have walked about. I don't know, hundreds of thousands of steps to get around that place. Um, but it was fun. But they're just yeah. they're so busy. So bu- Even Christmas Day, it was just like jam-packed. I'm like, this is crazy. This is crazy. 
But no, it was fun. It was fun. So if you ever go, just tell me because I will be. I love Disney. Disney's just awesome. I'll I'll let you know. <laughs> Disney is the best ever. Uh, so yeah. So tell us, what have you no. got planned for the rest of twenty twenty four? Yeah, so I sat down at the end of last year and sort of made my whole plan for the year, which is exciting for me because I am normally like a wing it person. I'm like, I've got this song. What are we going to do? Just drop it tomorrow, you know? (laughs) Um, And my whole team behind me is like, Cora, please, you are a mess. (laughs) Um, So I finally sat down. I've planned everything. All of the songs that I'm releasing this year are recorded and ready to go. And now I'm just working on um, working on some videos, some photos, and confirming shows. Um, and then hopefully we get to release them very, very shortly with some more details. Perfect. Well, we look forward to hearing new music because the music we've heard so far is absolutely fantastic. We look forward to hearing Thank some more. You. And thank you so much for joining me today. It was awesome to talk to you. Thank you. you. My pleasure. No worries. No worries. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Thank you very much, everybody else, for joining us. We'll see you soon. Adios. I don't know how to uh, stop. If you enjoyed today's episode of Crazy Women Country, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Be sure to click the subscribe button for new interviews weekly. And thank you, friends, for joining us today on Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter.